Thunderdome Boxing Talk. I'm Anthony. This video, I want to talk about uh, the great boxer and the tragedy that is Edwin Valero. Okay? We all know this tragic story, but maybe not everybody knows uh, just how good of a fighter this dude really was, you know? Valero held the uh, WBA world title at 130 pounds, then he moved up and captured the uh, WBC world title at 135 pounds. All right. Also, his first 18 bouts ended in first round KOs. His record, 27-0, 27 knockouts. The first 18 fights, all first round knockouts, okay? Dude fought like an extremely heavy-handed uh, young Roberto Duran, you know? Just, uh, just a little more evil. And, uh, and it's hard to be more evil than Roberto Duran. Uh, I mean, talk... Talk to or listen to his trainers or even sparring partners, you know. His uh, his punches crippled guys, you know. Made them dizzy, made them want to puke. Uh, just just within a few rounds, too, you know. Uh, he had fighters beaten to the point of sickness, like puking and dizziness, sickness. And I've never seen anything like that in my life, ever, you know. I would have, personally, I would have loved to have seen uh, Valero get together with Freddie Roach and uh, work together. It would have been amazing with Roach's, like, offensive style. He could have really taken him to, like, that next level, you know. Roach would have had him uh, probably kill someone in the ring, though. If he was training with Roach, he would have been, like, vicious, vicious. And he probably would have killed someone in the ring. His sparring partners have some great stories, too, you know. Uh, he sparred with good pros, you know, good pros, such as, uh, like, Juan Lescano, uh, Ponce de Leon, uh, Mikey Garcia, uh, the brothers um, um, Robert and Jose Santa Cruz, uh, Panchito Bajado, I'm sure you guys remember him, he came out there like with Jeff Lacey and Rocky Juarez back in the day, uh, Mike Alvarado, he sparred Mike Alvarado, uh, but Juan Lescano uh, sparred uh, Edwin Valero one time and got hurt so bad he quit. And during the first round, I add, he got hurt so bad in the first round, he quit and would never spar him ever again, and never did either, okay? Uh, everybody, and I mean everybody who fought him, got hurt badly, and, uh, and said it felt like he had fucking bricks in, uh, in, in his gloves, you know, which he didn't, he never tampered with his gloves or nothing like that, he just had that kind of power to where it hurt that bad when he hit you, you know? Uh, and this is all no joke, no exaggeration either. You can go do the YouTube research and, uh, find all the videos, you know, Edwin Valero, Mikey Garcia sparring. Uh, if you just watch that video, then you can watch some others that are on the side and things like that, where people talk about sparring with them or just talk about him, what they saw him do to people, things like that. All of his opponents, whether pro bouts or sparring partners, have said so too. Uh, they said uh, he's the only fighter that punches your arms, and then that arm is in so much pain that you can barely use it. And then, boom, he punches it again. You know, most people have to punch your arms for ten rounds before you can't hold them up. He just had to hit your arm one time, and your arm was hurting badly. Okay. Uh, if a sparring partner actually fought him and didn't run... He knocked them out every time, okay? I'm talking 18-ounce gloves, 16-ounce gloves, headgear, uh, and he's knocking your ass out if you stand with him and bang. You know, uh, he knocked out Panchito Bajado. He knocked out uh, Anchondo. He knocked out uh, Alvarado. He knocked out Ponce de Leon and could have easily knocked out Mikey Garcia in sparring. Uh, Mikey Garcia himself has said that, okay, just in case you think I'm bullshitting. You know, I watched a video with uh, Mikey Garcia, and he said that uh, he sparred with Pacquiao, he sparred with Valero, he's even sparred with Mayweather. And uh, he said Valero hit way harder than any of them. You know, he, he said uh, Pacquiao was the fastest and hit hard as hell too, but nothing compared to uh, Valero, you know. Uh, everybody that knew him called him like a freak of nature for his uh, ability, you know. And uh, every one of his punches hurt so bad, uh, e even the light ones, you know. And that's why they called him a freak of nature, you know. He just had it like that, really. He just had it like that. I mean, 
he hits a pro boxer in the head, and the boxer goes dizzy and uh, then starts puking. That's telling you something, you know. He's the only one uh, I've ever seen uh, to or heard of to do that to somebody, you know, uh, to hit a pro in the head and give him, that's a concussion, you know, if he's dizzy and he's throwing up from a head injury, that's a concussion, you know, he was giving dudes concussions with one punch to the head, I mean, that's vicious, man, vicious, you know, hardest puncher at that, at that weight, hands down, hands down, uh, Mikey Garcia said, uh, he could never, uh, beat Valero, ever, like, he said Valero would have beat him 10 out of 10 times, he said, uh, he sparred with Valero, and he'd have to ask him, uh, he'd have, Garcia would have to ask Valero to take it easy on him, you know, and, uh, of course, Valero would take it easy on him, but still, Garcia would have to dance around the ring using just the jab, nah, playing it safe, just trying to survive, you know, running around so he didn't get hurt, you know, damn, like, just sparring, uh, and Garcia, Garcia couldn't even spar with Valero because he knew if he did, he was going to get hurt badly. So he could just get in there and like dance around with them, you know, and Garcia is uh, Mikey Garcia is a good, good fighter, you know, and, uh, uh, Valero, he had, he had speed, you know, there's a YouTube vid out there to back up everything I'm saying and this, and, uh, I saw a YouTube vid, uh, for this here, right, he was shown... Um, he was showing off his speed one time, right, and he hit the heavy bag almost 900 times in one round. Like, wow, that's fucking amazing, man. You break it down, that's like four punches a second for three minutes straight. Just crack, you know, wow. Wow, man. Uh, he, he had to start, he actually had to start sparring against uh, middleweights to light heavyweights because no one else would spar with him. And uh, that's not even the type of people he needed to be sparring with, because they're not going to be able to, like, imitate what a lightweight could do. But he had to, you know. And uh, anyone his size, he was just hurting too bad. Like, ending careers and sparring type hurting too bad. Uh, but even the big guys weighing 170, 180 would get punched four or five times and quit because he hit too hard. I've never heard of such a thing, ever, you know. Uh... I've been in plenty of boxing gyms, but watched plenty of videos, talked to plenty of boxers. I've never heard of anything like that. Okay, but again, the uh, uh, again the sparring session and interviews are uh, all on YouTube, along with everything else uh, I talk about in this video. So you can go look it up for yourself, just so you know I'm not bullshitting, right? His trainer said when he fights, he fights like a demon. He becomes possessed, and all Valero wants to do is literally kill the other guy and uh <clears throat> that he, he said he also he wasn't there mentally everyone knew he wasn't there mentally you know he would just walk around like he was in a, in a daze <clears throat> talking even during training uh he had a great chin though great great chin and uh thank god because he was able to be hit you know but nobody wanted to hit him either though because he's gonna throw right back and hit you and no matter where he hit you, you're going to be in pain, all right? So after 18 first-round knockouts, he had his 19th fight. And if he won, he was going to get a world title shot, right? He won, of course. And, of course, he knocked the dude out. But this time, it took him a little longer in that one round. It took him till the second round. <laughs> like, wow. Edwin Valero's next seven fights were all world title fights at 130 and 135, all right? And his fame just exploded. Everyone wanted to see him in big fights. They were talking about him and JMM, him and Pacquiao. Like, oh my fucking God, those would have been great fights, you know. Valero wanted JMM first, so he could uh, be the Ring Magazine uh, champ at 135. Then he was going to clean up lightweight and move up to 140. Uh, Valero would have had so many huge, huge fights ahead of him had he lived. Uh, crazy thing is, nobody really knows anything about him, like... Like, where did he come from besides his country, you know, Venezuela? Where, and, and I'm talking about, like, like just he, he just, like, came out of nowhere one day and came into the gyms of L.A. and started crushing every pro he sparred with. Like, seriously, dude just came out of nowhere and started annihilating everybody. Nobody could make it to a final bell with this guy. Uh, Mosquera 
was his, uh, wh who was 24 and 1, uh, was Valero's first fight for the uh, WBA uh, title, at uh, world title at 130 pounds. Okay, it was his first chance to get a title. Mascaro was a tough, tough son of a bitch, right? But he couldn't even last 10 rounds with Valero. And Valero, of course, knocked him out winning the championship. All right, now he's the WBA super featherweight <clears throat> world champion. Valero's first defense was against uh, Lozado, who was 22-3. and three. Uh, Valero destroyed him, as usual, and knocked him out in the first round. Okay, another first round knockout. His second defense of the belt was against uh, Honmo, who was 29-4. and four. He was another tough son of a bitch, right? And he made it uh, the whole way to the eighth round, and then Valero knocked him out cold. Uh, his third defense was against Zavaleta. We all know Zavaleta, and uh, Valero ran right through him, man. Ran right through him and knocked him out in the third round. Uh, his last defense of the 130-pound title was against Shimada, who took a beating for seven rounds, man, uh, and was then knocked out cold. You know, after that, Valero moved up. Ugh, excuse me, Valero moved up to uh, lightweight and fought uh, Pitalau for the vacant WBC 135-pound uh, uh, world title, you know. So this was for the lightweight WBC world belt. At the time, Pitalau was uh, Valero's biggest and most important uh, fight there was, you know. So what did Valero do? He went out, and in typical Valero fashion, he destroyed him and knocked Pitalau out in the second round and became the WBC world champion at lightweight. Boom. Two-time world champion already. All right. Uh, his first defense of the uh, lightweight belt was against uh, Velasquez. You know, we all know Velasquez, great fighter. And, uh, damn, did Valero beat the hell out of him, man, for seven rounds. Seven rounds. And, uh, he, he, he knocked him out in the seventh also. You know, he beat the dog shit out of him, though. It was pretty bad. Um, Valero's next fight was to be his big breakout fight when he put his title on the, uh, the line and fought the very good fighter we all know, Antonio DeMarco. Uh, in what I think was Valero's best performance, you know, I think it was his best performance. Yeah, but he literally abused DeMarco the entire fight. Uh, DeMarco was claiming he was dizzy and about to puke. He was broken down to the edge of death, and I'm not joking. And his corner saw this and knew this, but they still sent him out to fight another round. And Valero went to work and beat the shit out of the kid. I've never seen such a beating my entire life. Of course Valero knocked him out. I uh, knocked him the fuck out in uh, the ninth round. And if you've never seen that fight, that's a, you must go YouTube that fight right now and watch it. So as soon as this video is over, go watch it. All right, Valero is someone who can box, he's awkward, southpaw, and he has the most ridiculous punching power anyone has ever seen at that weight. Uh, that's why they say he was a freak of nature, you know. There's really no other way to explain him. Plus, just look at him. He looks like he's uh, completely insane and off in his own little galaxy at all times. Uh, he was very antisocial. I don't know if that was part of his like mental illness or what. Uh, but he would never talk to anybody, like, no reporters. He didn't even really talk to the people in his gym. They said he would just sit there quiet the whole time, do his work, or either stare off into space and stuff. Like, he was he was out there, man. He wasn't all there. A lot of people, though, called him a freak of nature, but whatever, you can, you can call him whatever, right? But what is certain is that he was a, a one-of-a-kind fighter in his time, and maybe of all time, you know? After he demolished Antonio DeMarco, he was to fight Juan Manuel Marquez. You know, Valero wanted that fight. The the I think it was HBO wanted that fight. And, uh, yeah, we all wanted that fight, too, you know. We look at Triple G now like, wow, he's really getting in there and, uh, and knocking people out. Well, so is Valero, but Valero was almost killing them, literally. 
and uh, he was ruining them forever, you know, he was destroying their bodies. Uh, if you went six, seven, eight rounds with Valero, your brain, neck, chest, arms, ribs were all going to be sore, swollen, maybe even broken, you know. He was so damn dangerous. I can't, uh, I can't believe they even got people to fight him, you know. Obviously, they did, though. They got 27 people to fight him, and every one of them got beat so damn bad, you know. And, and it's 27-0 and with 27 knockouts. Come on. And it's not like he was, like, losing rounds and, like, needed a desperate KO. No, he was just getting in the ring and beating them silly, beating them down until he knocked them out. You know, I... I believe if he fought and beat JMM, Valero would have shot right to superstar, superstar status and would have been uh, the next big thing, which they were already hyping him up as anyways, and he had the goods, that's where he was headed. Valero would have given us so many great fights had that terrible tragedy not happened. Think about it. Uh, think about this, you know. He had 27 fights, and he was only in 67 rounds. You know, that's crazy, man. That is crazy. It's it, it, it it's unfortunate and extremely saddening that he let his uh, mental illness get the best of him on that fateful night where he stabbed and murdered his girlfriend. It was like 2010, 2011, I can't really remember. Then he turned himself into the police and was taken to jail. I guess after he either like sobered up or got his mind right, he realized what he had done and then must have felt horrible because she was always at his fights. She used to be ringside on HBO, you know, cheering for him. They loved each other. And, and at that moment, sitting in that cage, uh, knowing he couldn't live without her, he made the choice. So he took off his shirt. He, and uh, he used it to hang himself to death uh, in that prison cell. Uh, guards discovered his body, but it was too late to save him. You know, it was just too, he was too far gone. I mean, damn, why did such a fatal tragedy, you know, have to happen to that couple and such a great once-in-a-lifetime type fighter like, like him, you know? I don't think I'll ever get to see a fighter even close to him ever again. I'm not saying he's my all-time favorite or anything like that or that I think he could beat everybody or anything like that, but I sure would have loved to see him against, like, today's greats, you know. Had he lived, he'd be peaking right now. He'd be in his prime right now. That's a scary thought. Look at what he was doing when he was just rough. Imagine him in his prime, all peaked with a great trainer. Wow. Wow. I would have loved to have seen that Valero, uh against all the top pound-for-pound pound fighters that are out right now, you know. Uh, so please, though, if you have any uh, faith, say a prayer for him and his wife and uh, both of their families. Thanks, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed this little story about Valero here. Um, this is Thunderdome Boxing, though, and uh, if you enjoy, watch the other videos and check them out. And if you enjoy them as well, subscribe, please. Thank you. Thunderdome Boxing Talk.